Hello everybody, I'm SJM. Welcome back to some Minecraft. Today I'm going to be going over some tips and tricks for uh, Darkosto's latest pack, uh, which is Sky Factory 1. So the last pack that he Sky Factory he made was Sky Factory 4, and then he took a step backwards, quote unquote, set a challenge for himself in remaking the original Sky Factory, but uh, in 1.16 um, with all the out-of-date mods, you know, some substitutions had to be made here and there, yada yada. There's a big long story about it if you care about it. Other than that, it's a pretty uh, open kitchen sink style Skybox pack, so there's nothing that's really gated uh, to behind anything too much and except in the fact of your knowledge on how to get to it as fast as possible so it's gated in a way but not like by the end to any degree that something like um, some of his other packs are so you'll start up on top of a tree and just bear with me here because I've created a whole world to go over all the tips and tricks I can uh, to get you from the very start um, to uh, access to all materials, at which point the world is your oyster, literally, and uh, all that's standing between you and your ultimate um, sky factory is your knowledge of modded Minecraft, which this will kind of help you get through, too, because, you know, through JEI and, um, you know, maybe trying different things that you haven't tried before, you can learn a lot that way. So you'll start off on the top of the tree there. You'll have to dig yourself down. You're going to want to make yourself the wooden crook, the first thing. So if you dig down into two blocks of the wood of the tree, then you can create a crafting uh, table and then make a crook with the other wood that you got. And then you can get the uh, leaves. Just note that the tilde key is your... Um, or excavation key so that's the one that's beside the one at the top left of your keyboard and just hitting that and tapping that will get you all the leaves all at one time and I'm in creative mode so I didn't get any of the drops but um, from there you'll get some saplings and some apples and uh, silkworms possibly silkworms you'll use to get your first string uh, and so on and so forth. And then you'll replant your saplings there, chop down the tree, all that's all good stuff. So just put that back there. Uh, and yeah, just getting that tree out of the way so I can go through everything. So the first uh, thing that you're going to want is to make some more dirt. You start off with just the one in the center and then you're going to kind of want to expand your tree area out into like a three by three at the very least or larger if you like getting more wood at a single time and for that you're going to need to get these barrels these guys right here and I just made these out of some different woods just for fun and giggles so you'll get some barrels you'll put your uh, leftover items in there so leftover saplings um, if you can get leaves, they'll, they can go in there, extra silkworms can go in there, and then what they do is they compost down and will make dirt. Um, and, uh, I've got a little setup here, which is, you know, nice and compact, where we've got, uh, the two barrels with two hoppers going in, uh, and so the chests on top here, these are slab chests, so if you want to be really conservative with your... Uh, resources at the beginning you can make slab versions of most of the things so slab chests slab fur furnaces and slab crafting table that's kind of moot because you need a crafting table to make slabs in the first place so it doesn't really save you from making the initial crafting table there but the other thing I don't like about these is they kind of look a little wonky too like those are two are stacked on top of each other you can't get like one in the middle there so if you want to save on your resources, then you can. Um, and then obviously that the uh, chest slabs, they uh, have a full inventory. So it is truly only takes half of the wood to make them, but they don't connect to make a double chest like this guy here. Okay. And so I would have a double, a regular double chest up there instead of the single chest. And then that way you can just, whenever you gather your resources, you can just dump them in there. Those two chests will hopper into the 
barrels and then the wooden hoppers there will take the outputs from the barrels and put them back in there. Uh, if you look at the bottom left, I'm in a badlands plateau. This area doesn't get any rain, um, but if you are in an area where you do get rain, then you're going to want to kind of put covers over your barrels because um, if it starts raining then they'll fill up with water. You might want that at some point but um, if you are in an air because you're going to need water at some point but if you are like me in an area where you don't get rain like this Badlands Plateau then you'll need to build yourself this oak crucible and that's where you'll need to get leaves off of the tree. Um, this is the one tinkers item I would actually make at the beginning of the game is the Kama. Nakama is a, uh, a shearer and also will help you uh, till soil so that you can make some farmland, which is one of the first, the next things that I'll do with my dirt once I've got this uh, established here because um, you'll want to get some farmland going there so that you can plant some crops and get some food because the apples are only going to go so far. And yes, you can cook the silkworms in your furnace to get food, uh, but it's really horrible and more of a waste of your time than, uh, than just getting um, some uh, plants going right away. So once you've got some dirt there for your trees so you can get more more trees more efficiently and you get some farmland going you can start um, sieving your dirt so you'll need to make some sieves and then the sieve mesh which you make from the string that you get from silkworming the trees and these connect up to a five by five um, before I get any automation going I like to max it out at a three by three uh, so just never mind this machine here so just say a three by three and then you can stand in the middle and you you might lose a, a piece here or there over the edge, but um, you know that way you kind of minimize the amount of time you're standing over one of these sieves, sieving uh, your, your sand or your dirt. Uh, your dirt will give you access to your first cobblestone and your first stone, which I do suggest uh, moving from the wooden crook up into a stone crook. Now you can make it out of the regular cobble uh, stone pebbles or you can make it out of one of the variants as well so the andesite or the diorite or the granite whichever one you're not going to use I suggest um, but in the long run the stone is the best because you can you'll have eventually you'll have access to infinite stone anyways and to get the other variants you'll need to sieve down dirt again so um, I, like I mentioned before, I don't like making the uh, Tinker's tools so much uh, because uh, the regular tools can be repaired just in your crafting grid. Um, and I'll go over that here in a couple of seconds. So once we've got some of our dirt um, scraped down and we've got some access to some cobble, um, Oh, and the other thing with the uh, trees is once you've gotten lots and lots of wood and maybe more than what you need, you can make yourself the hammer and then start hammering down the uh, trees instead. And uh, that will give you sawdust, which you can put into your dirt manufacturing facility because you can't put the, the logs in there for obvious reasons. Or not, not obviously, but you can't put them in there and you can't put your sticks and then eventually you're going to end up with a lot of sticks, which I use as fuel in my furnaces for the first uh, go around. So you'll start getting some cobblestone, which you make by crafting the stone pebbles together and then um, you can crush those down to make some uh, gravel. And then you put the gravel through these sieves until you get a little bit of iron. And once you've gotten eight iron ore chunks, then you can make two iron ore pieces. Uh, you can smelt each iron ore piece in the furnace for one iron ingot. Um, but if you, if you want to get um, a little bit more early ore doubling, you can make the grinder and then the grinder handle. Now this does take um, iron to start. Um, but once you get after you get your first iron, you can make the grinder and the grinding handle, and then you can start doubling up on it. 
and then you'll want to get the first iron thing that you're going to want to get is a bucket because we're going to be going into uh, making lava next. So to start making lava, we're going to need one of these items here, which is the fired crucible. So to make the unfired crucible, you need porcelain, which is a mixture of clay and um, bone meal. So clay is a little bit tricky, but if you get some water in your crucible, either via leaves or other plant material or because it was raining, um, you can put sand in there. So sand in a water-filled um, vessel will give you clay back and then you get a clay block. You just have to break it to get the clay balls after that. And then you'll have to combine it with some bone meal. Um, if you look through JEI for bone meal, you can see that if you sieve down dust, it gives you a chance to make um, bone meal. But I do suggest the vanilla method, which is using the composter. So this way you can take some more leaves or um, if you've got extra apples or say you sieve down some dirt and then you started getting some wheat and carrots and potatoes then you'll get you'll have lots of fodder for putting through the composter to get yourself the bone meal uh, which is a little bit less frustrating than trying to get the percent chance from trying to sieve down some dust because eventually you know if you don't hit lucky you're going to have to make you're going to have to make more dirt and sieve through that and end up with a bunch of extra the the dirt byproducts there that you maybe don't really want extra seeds and saplings and all that kind of stuff so definitely suggest that route for getting your your porcelain then you get your crucible you're going to put that torch that you started with under there and that gives you a heat of two so it will take some time to get some lava going um, and then once you yeah so once you get your first bits of water obviously you're going to want to make yourself the infinite lava water source either with the three waters in the row or the square of water whichever ways you want and then you're going to want to make your first cobble generator so you can start with the um, standard you know you put your water here then a space and maybe a hole here and then your lava here or here and when the lava comes and touches the water that's going down the hole you'll get a, a piece of cobblestone generated there and then you'll break that and then it rinse and repeat there is a good use for these, um, why I s said about the crafting slabs here, is that you can make a cobble generator um, with the crafting slabs because they the crafting tables won't burn. Um, if you make this out of regular slabs, they won't burn, but they will catch fire, which can be a little bit dangerous for you. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just give myself a bucket to, so that I can show you the, the way we actually make this cobble generator. So I'm just going to remove the lava for now. And then we're going to vein mine up all of that. So you want a, uh, it's a seven or a five by five but you want three holes there and you know just I have a way to stop the water from flowing out the bottom of the world down there uh, yeah with just some placeholders on the corners there and then you're gonna put four buckets of water there and then you put your you've got a crouch to do it put your lava in the middle and bang you're gonna get that there so let's just switch back to survival and we'll show you because this will get you six or eight um, cobble at a time you will get some loss ah, and my friends have come because while I've been making this I haven't been doing anything ah be back in a sec. All right, we're back. I've killed off those uh, silly little things in uh, <laughs> creative mode. But uh, yeah, just wanted to show you how this cobble generator works. So we can vein mine each of those and then bang. We're getting, see that time we only got seven, but that's fine. 
Now the going back to the uh, thing I was saying earlier about the Tinker's tools and the reason why I stay away from them at the beginning of the game is because we can take the vanilla tools and just take some of this cobblestone that we've been collecting and we can just craft it there instead of you know either having to run back to the station to fix uh, putting your tools in here to repair them or making the um, repair kits which costs you one of the patterns every time um, it's not like the old or the old tinkers where you didn't have to make a pattern every time this time it takes a pattern for every repair kit that you want to make so it's kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt that way uh, but yeah grinding out your cobblestone this way will, can get you to your cobble generator a little bit faster so we're just going to go over here and there's five different kinds of cobble gens uh, so there's the tier 1, tier 2, the tier 3 with the iron, tier 4 with the gold, and tier 5 with the diamond there. Um, I, I totally skipped doing the cobble gen tier 1 because it's pretty slow uh, off the beginning and it doesn't have as good a heat source either because you can, like you see, we've got the um, crucible right on top of the generator there and see that... Um, fired crucible there has the heat of four with the tier four um, generator under it so you can automate quote unquote automate your lava a little bit that way uh, but going back to this thing here so with this clicker uh, or with this um, grinder after a while, you know, you don't need that anymore because you're going to be getting into tinkers and you're going to be doubling up your ores in the smeltery anyways. But what you can do is actually uh, make one of these items a click machine. And that will actually, let's just put something in there because if you're, if you're turning that handle um, without the something in there then it tends to break pretty quickly so you've got to kind of keep on top of it and this uh, grinder isn't automatable unfortunately you can't pipe into or out of it so uh, but with that there and the clicker which you kind of want to go into the GUI and turn it all the way up so that it doesn't go so if you turn it all the way down you can see that it barely turns that handle at all so turning it all the way up will at least make it go around in a somewhat fast portion. Uh, but once again, after some time, this is not going to be very efficient either anymore, but it is just something that can idly get you some resources, like getting to the gravel to grind that, or you can grind the gravel down to sand, or the sand down to dust, and so on and so forth, if you wish. Uh, but needless to say, once you're done with your this kind of setup here, you can reposition your click machine into your sieving setup to get this automated. Uh, you can put it down at the bottom like I have down there if you see, um, but that's not so easy for piping and everything unless you build multi-layers, which I guess you can do. Uh, but the other way is to just instead of having 25 meshes or sieves in your setup just have 24 replace one with the click machine you can put a hopper on there or you can use some piping to get your items into there and then it will um, sieve automatically whenever there's things coming into the system the uh, thing that you want to do after that is get yourself a drawer system or you can just use a chest at the start uh, when you're first collecting things, but you'll will need this absorption hopper if you truly want to get that and to get an absorption hopper you're going to need An eye of ender eye of ender is not too bad because we can get the blaze plowder by grinding or by um, sifting but the ender pearl you need to get from an enderman and for that, you're going to need a rudimentary mob farm. So this is uh, with the slab changes in uh, recently. You can't just build it um, like with the one slab there because these won't be the yellow X's. So see there and that if that hole is open then all of a sudden there's light coming in and it's not red anymore 
So you kind of got to build yourself a little entrance room that's a little bit dark um, before you can get your uh, creatures in there, your mobs. Um, and Endermen are pretty uh, spammy so that you can get to your Ender Pearls pretty quickly. It's a real boon at the start of the game, but it gets a little bit tedious towards uh, when you get a real mob fact or real um, mob grinder going on and using all those utilities for that. But yeah, you basically you want to take a step down so that you're on the bottom half slabs. Right, and then you can have, um, this is the, right? This is the floor that they'll step on. And then you need it three higher after that. Uh, don't forget to slab off the top so that you don't get monsters uh, spawning up there. Or you can light it up, you know, the choice is yours. Uh, but then you, Jim, then you just have another roll of slabs there. And then you can just stand here, swing away. Um, some of the half size guys like the baby zombies and stuff can see you but they still can't get to you here uh, and you can collect all of the drops without too much ado um, with this kind of a setup once you start getting into the mid game and you've got things a little bit automated and resources are coming in you're going to want to make yourself this magnet uh, it's not too hard once you get into it, it just takes another ender pearl there, some iron and a piece of redstone. And that way, when you're redesigning your base or maybe you've got things placed precariously on the edge like this that you don't, when you break, you want to catch it before it falls off, the magnet will really help you with that uh, so that you don't lose things too often. Uh, so coming around here I've got a couple of different setups here for um, resource production so getting into tinkers you're going to need a lot of clay and as I mentioned before getting water into the crucible can be a little bit time-consuming if you're just using leaves and other plant matter but what you can get is there's a fluid hopper and it's not too hard to make it just takes some clay bricks to get going and a regular hopper and basically if you set it up over an infinite water source and you get your sand Basically, you can just I think I need a block update. It shouldn't be too hard here. Does oh, maybe that needs to be a barrel. That's what I'm, yes, can't be a crucible for that setup, so. Back in a second. All right, so we're back. So, yes, you've got your fluid hopper going into the um, thing. You can even have a um, regular hopper coming out into a chest beneath it if you really want to automate it even further. But basically, you can just sit here and you can spam clay till your heart's content. Let's turn on our magnet so we collect that either. And you need dust to make it, not sand. Actually, I put sand in there in there the first time and actually made uh, seawater instead, um, instead of clay. But yeah, it's pretty handy and you're going to need a lot, a lot of uh, clay to get uh, into the tinkers because I think I went through about two stacks, a little bit more than two stacks of grout just to get a basic setup going. Uh, in my regular world. Uh, the other resources that we're going to need um, are going to be soul sand and you're going to need netherrack. You're going to want to um, and the birds are back. Alright so I just made myself a bed and these guys can go away now if they're if they please. Uh, so yes, the other 
and then the other setup here is we're going to need witch water so that we can make the um, soul sand and slime. So you're going to use these uh, fluid cables from Cyclic. These are a little bit cheaper um, to get going in the early game. So this will be your early game piping solution uh, till you get the resources going real good. Uh, and then just to, if you got this fluid cable, you have to get underneath it here and bang, you can set it up like that. And then that'll automatically pump in uh, water to your oak barrel with some mycelium beneath it to make your witch water. And then you're going to have an in and out system here. So we want to come in or yeah, in from there and then out from there. And then if we grab ourselves some sand, and bone meal, so sand in there, we'll go in, give us soul sand immediately, and that's not updating with water for some reason, oh, because I'm in creative. Creatives messing that up with the uh, infinite water source. See, it doesn't recreate an infinite water source, but yeah, trust me, in survival it does work just fine. The bone meal on the witch water will give you slime, which you're going to need to get into uh, some other things further down the road. But then you can get your tinkers uh, set up going. Um, recently, they just changed how you make the smeltery controller. So you're going to need to do the seared uh, heater and melter setup first. And then um, with the uh, once you've melted up about four, you need four ingots of molten copper up there. Then you can break your melter down there and then put it into the uh, basin. And then you pour over those and that'll help. That will make your uh, controller for you. And then you can automate this, obviously, you get a hopper into the controller with a chest on top it's where you'll put your raw materials, a lever on top of your drain with a couple of casting tables once you've made some ingot casts with hoppers down below. And that can automate all of your ingots. Uh, the other thing I suggest at the early game is you get yourself a little... Um, area here for getting uh, livestock so if you can build like a mob farm it has to be a certain distance away before passive mobs will farm here but you can also make some baits if you want so the wolf bait ocelot bait so you might you definitely want to get yourself a couple of cows um, and a, uh, some chickens as well because um, with cows and chickens, you'll get leather and feathers, and you can use the um, force shears. So in force craft, we have the force shears. With those, you can shear cows, chickens, sheep. Uh, haven't tried any other animals at this point yet, but that'll get you uh, some of those resources that you're gonna need to make some of the uh, handier items uh, along the way so that should give you all of the tools that you need um oh yes and then sorry with the lava setup here so we've got a cobble gen into a crucible where you would need a heat source uh below it here so um just break that um, you can use lava. Lava is a three times, so you would go from two times with the torch to, to three times with the lava. Uh, but this, the next best one is, uh, is netherrack. Because fire will give you six times. So you just need that bit of space there and then we've got a heat of six on there which does make lava a little bit quicker 
And yeah, you just can't have it around a whole bunch of wooden things, otherwise you make that. But that'll get your uh, lava into a stone barrel. And there's a few recipes that you can do once you have lava into a stone barrel. If you have wood over top of it, I just use trap doors here to keep it all contained up nicely. Um, that will make obsidian. Um, but then if you remove the water... Uh, and uh, yeah, you have your stone barrel there uh, with lava in it. Redstone will make you your netherrack for getting your heat there. Or glowstone on a stone barrel full of lava will make your end stone. So those your your soul sand, your end stone, and your um, netherrack. You'll have to crush up the netherrack and the the end stone before you can start sifting it. But that is the way you get the last of your basic resources, which you need to get going on to your journey into the technical technological mods, uh, which then you can start getting some true automation going on everything. So I hope you enjoyed this little tips and tricks video. That's all I've got to show you uh, for this time around. Um, there's a few Let's Plays going on out there if you really want some more in-depth things and some more like um, direction for progression. Um, I was just trying to get the basic outlines here for everybody so that you can kind of make your way uh, in the world at your own pace and at your uh, in your own style so uh, thumbs up if you enjoyed leave a comment if I missed anything obvious for the early game and uh, I appreciate you all and we will see you in the next one